So in part D of this question, which is definitely the hardest part, um, we're looking for the area of the portion of the region S that is also inside the circle R equals K cosine theta, and then taking the limit as K approaches infinity. So that's a pretty weird idea, not like anything they've asked us to do before, and that's, that's what they like to do, is ask us to do things we've never done before. So we have to get a handle on what this graph of R equals K cosine theta looks like, like that would be our starting point. So, um, if we look at our y equals, I've gone ahead and added in uh, 1 cosine theta. So uh, that way I'll be able to uh, easily edit that to be 2, 3, 4, because we want the limit as k approaches infinity, so we want to be able to change this k value. All right, so if I look at that graph, and let's say you start with the window, um, I, this weird looking uh, theta max is actually the square root of pi. And then I wasn't sure what to set the x min and x max. I guess negative 5 to 5, um, just based on uh, we've got 3 times the square root of theta times the sine. So, you know, it's it's going to be, you know, as much as 3, but square root theta, you, that's going to go up to like pi or something. So uh, it's a little hard to get a handle on exactly what this is going to be. So I guessed 5. And then when I went to graph it, it looked okay. So that looks okay. That's what it looks like. So my problem is, though, here's my little r cosine theta down here, this little semicircle, and I don't really see much of it. I suspect that I'm not seeing the whole graph because in my window, I'm only letting the theta max go up to square root pi. And a lot of times these uh, equations like k cosine theta, they're going to require the theta max to be 2 pi. Uh, and it might be just pi, but, you know, 2 pi will be a good safety. So then I go to graph that, and the problem I encounter is that the, I get this craziness. So, like, what's that about? Well, what's going on is that this equation that they gave us that only has theta 0 to square root pi looks all nice as long as my theta doesn't go past square root pi. But what we're seeing here is what happens to that function when theta is more than square root pi, and we get this weird graph. So the thing to do about that is to go back to our y equals window and just turn that graph off by net for now. So I'm going to highlight the equal sign, I'm going to press enter to turn it off, and now I can see the equal sign is not highlighted, so that graph is off. And now, when I go to graph, I can just see that my uh, 1 cosine theta is just a circle that is uh, tangent to the y-axis. So, all right, so that's nice. Let's, um, let's start playing with that and see uh, what happens as the as the k increases. So here's k equals 1. Let's do k equals 2. Graph it, see what it looks like. Oh, I get a bigger circle. All right, so let's go back to y equals, and we'll put 3 and graph that, and we get a bigger circle. And so we can see that as we keep going back and forth and looking at larger and larger y's, what we're getting is larger and larger circles. And those circles, k cosine theta, that's what's intersecting with our graph here. So, you know, I'm getting a, a smaller circle here, and then I'm getting a bigger circle like that, and that's our k cosine theta. Now, I could do some work of finding what this area is between one of the circles and the given function. Um, you could do that. It's really problematic, especially since you're going to have a different intersection point depending on what the value of k is. It becomes really, really difficult to do. So what they're really counting on you to notice instead is that as k approaches infinity, these circles get bigger and bigger and are always tangent to the y-axis. So as the circles become infinitely large, they start to include all of quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 and nothing else. In fact, when this circle becomes infinitely large, you could say I have a circle of infinite radius whose center is at x equals negative infinity, way over there. That's where the center is. But because the circle is infinitely large, the curvature is zero, and it's basically just a straight line. So what's happened is, as k approaches infinity, this graph becomes nothing other than the plane of quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So what that tells you is that in order to find the area, all you really have to do is say, all right, well, when I get that infinite circle, I'm really just going from theta equals 0 up to theta equals pi over 2. So I'll do that same uh, area equation I've done for this whole problem, except instead of doing the integral from 0 to square root pi, I'll do integral from 0 to pi over 2 of r squared theta d theta. All right. So now, remembering that I have um, 
in my Y window, I have R. So let's go and put uh, 0.5 times uh, math 9 for the integral. We'll go 0 to pi over 2. Uh, I guess I could have copied down one of my earlier versions, but I don't know if I even still have them. Uh, and that, But I still can use R1, so we're going to go variables, y variables, polar, R1. Um, and I'm not going to forget to square it this time, so I'm going to insert an open parentheses, and then over here I'm going to insert an open parentheses and a square. And then I'm going to do d theta. So that looks good. So now I'm going to hit enter. And I get 3.324. So the trick to this whole one was to graphically understand what this meant. That was the trick to it. Um, and not get hung up on trying to do this integral with any particular values of k.